all set to go. Sorry we're a minute or two late just solving a couple of technical uh, difficulties, but welcome everyone to our first meeting in October. Uh, we're certainly getting into the fall, although we wouldn't know it from the weather, so we'll be take that as long as we can. So without uh, further ado, I'll uh, uh, call the meeting to order and ask uh, our clerk for the first item, please. Uh, roll call, Your Worship. I've taken the roll and all members of council are present. Thank you. Next item, please. A motion to adopt this evening's agenda. Moved by Councillor Cullen, seconded by Councillor Lupke. Any additions or changes? Seeing none, we'll call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Next item, please. Confirmation of the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held September 20th. Moved by Councillor Shiboye, seconded by Councillor Cameron. Any errors or omissions? And not seeing any, we'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Next item, please. Confirmation of the minutes of the special meeting of council held September 27th. Moved by Councillor Cameron, seconded by Councillor Frangi. Again, any errors or omissions? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Next item, please. Under the order of public hearings, Your Worship, a hearing regarding bylaw number 7317, which is to close a lane located north of Maple Avenue and south of Parker Boulevard. <clears throat> Very good. And uh, while well, we're getting a little more back to normal, uh, we're still required to have uh, uh, members of the public that wish to speak to council or attend a public hearing to order uh, a register in advance. and. Uh, so are we aware of any uh, registrants for tonight's hearing? No. We are not, uh, didn't have any registers, so um, a motion to conclude the hearing would be in order, please. Moved by Councillor Parker, seconded by Councillor Cameron. And on the motion to conclude the hearing, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Next item, please. Under the order of committee reports, Your Worship, we have a verbal report from the Keystone Centre. And Councillor Lupke. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Keystone Centre saw a return to events last month, outdoor events such as Midway Madness and Food Truck Wars, and this past Friday, the first major indoor event in 18 plus months in the Wheat King's home opener. As a facility that is entirely licensed, current public health orders require anyone attending events indoors at the Keystone Centre to be fully immunized. The unaudited projected statement of earnings for our 2020-2021 fiscal year that ended July 31st, 2021 were shared at our most recent board meeting, September 28th. We're pleased to have achieved an expected surplus, thanks mainly to the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, contracts for the vaccine super site and COVID testing site, and sound management practices during a year where minimal events took place at the Keystone Centre. You can advise that the province of Manitoba has confirmed their funding to the Keystone Centre for the 2021-2022 fiscal year in the amount of $750,000 for operational and capital. This was the amount assumed in the Keystone Centre's approved 2021-2022 financial plan as it has not changed for a number of years despite not having a formal funding agreement with the province of Manitoba currently. We are eagerly anticipating reviewing the long-term sustainability action plan from the province of Manitoba. I think on behalf of both uh, a member is the City of Brandon and on behalf of our Board of Directors, we are uh, quite looking forward to reviewing that. The delay is in being able to review the documents continues to harm our planning for the future, particularly our ability to update both the five-year and the current capital plans. We're hoping to have a more formal discussion with the Minister of Municipal Relations on this matter in the near future. Thank you very much, Councillor Lupke. That was a very positive report and great to hear uh, things getting started up again and uh, it's just nice to gradually uh, be coming back to a little more normalcy. So thank you very much. And any questions of uh, Councillor Lupke and I suppose also Councillor uh, Parker who is also a board member on the Keystone Board. Uh, any questions on this report? Not seeing any on behalf of Council and I thank you very much. Um, it was the only report, uh, committee report that we had scheduled tonight, but sometime there are other uh, 
committees that have met, then we could take those now. Councillor Fawcett. Yeah, through your worship, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm, we didn't actually meet, but on behalf of BUPAC, I just wanted to uh, extend a, a, a thank you to all the residents in the community and uh, the sponsors, uh, the credit unions, Compass, Sunrise, West Toba Fusion, Co-op, Beach Printing, Natural Wellness, and uh, such. And on behalf of all of our partners, uh, Friendship Center, MMF, DOTC, Sioux Valley, uh, the university, the ACC, and all the participants uh, that took part in our uh, our sort of Truth and Reconciliation Week. It was uh, a, a real uh, meaningful experience, I think, for people in Brandon. And uh, we were very fortunate. The weather worked extremely well. And uh, uh, for myself, who tried to participate in as much as I could, it was a real... Uh, uh, heartwarming experience and I hope that uh, we continue to grow uh, with all that. Uh, so we didn't meet this week officially but we met many times and uh, uh, Brandon wore a really good face all week. I hope we can wear it all the time. So thanks. Thank you very much for adding that uh, Councillor Fawcett and certainly would uh, add uh, Council's thanks to uh, the BUPAC board and, as you say, all of the sponsors and associated organizations and, and in particular, um, you don't like to single out people, but I would single out the executive director, uh, Michelle Letourneau, who really put in a, a massive amount of effort and uh, work and coordination, uh, you know, this uh, new uh, occasion, you know, really came upon all of us, you know, relatively short notice and uh, get great credit to Bupak and Michelle and her associated uh, sponsors and and uh, contributing organizations for, for putting together, a, a, as you put it, a very meaningful and uh, rewarding um, series of events all week long. Uh, I was able to attend a great many of them, also uh, attended uh, um, quite a... Um, um, a significant day put on by Sioux Valley out at the residential school site that they um, they own, uh, followed by uh, more festivities out at the Grand Valley Provincial Park uh, just west of Brannan, and, and so I was happy to be invited and included in that, uh, as was uh, Councillor Desjarly, uh, and I was out at that one as well. So lots uh, in the area, and as you put it, you know, I think that... Uh, it really set the stage uh, for the very first one and something that can be really grown upon uh, with certainly more notice and uh, very meaningful. So thanks for raising that. Councilor Fawcett. Yeah, through your worship, I am going to name drop uh, because I do want to recognize in particular a few Frank Tashin, who plays a real major role in a lot of this, Jason Gobey, who played a, a real helpful role, Michelle and uh, and uh, Tim Bone and his team that were uh, keeping that fire going. And there's multiple others, but if those uh, three in particular can pass that on to all the others that played such a big role, it was it was really a great, great event, so. Yeah, very good. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. Any other uh, committee reports that uh, wanted to get on the uh, docket tonight? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, motion to accept uh, the committee reports, particularly the Keystone followed by a boot pack report. Moved by Councillor Lupke, seconded by Councillor Desjarlais. Any discussion? Call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Next item, please. The order of inquiries, Your Worship. Okay, everybody's been quite busy. We've got quite a list of them, so we'll probably take them in order of the report. So, Councillor Lupke, uh, go ahead and lead us Thank off. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I had inquired about uh, the possibility of getting an update from the Brandon Downtown Development Corporation on kind of what they've been up to so far in 2021 and what their future plans may be, particularly for 2022. Very much. So our City Manager Ron Bowles has a response ready for us. 
Yes, and uh, through Mayor Crest to uh, Councillor Lubke, uh, this response comes is provided by Emika Eggison, uh, Executive Director for the Brandon Downtown Development Corporation, and he says that a formal presentation to Council on the 2021 accomplishments of the Brandon Downtown Development Corporation, as well as future plans, in particular for 2022, will be done later this year. The exact timeline for the presentation to Council has yet to be determined. Thank you. Thank you for that. I know uh, there has been some changeover in the BDDC in the last little while between directors and a new ED and stuff. I think it's uh, good that we'll get something kind of formally presented to us before we enter our 2022 budget deliberation. So look forward to seeing that. Yeah, very good. Thanks for bringing that up. And Councillor Parker. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I was recently uh, contacted by a resident in the area of Frederick Street and College Avenue with concerns about the safety at that particular intersection. Uh, it is an uncontrolled intersection and uh, there are some potential visibility issues there. So I'm just wondering if we can get traffic to uh, review and monitor the site and report back with any remedies that may be available. Thank you very much. Again, back to Mr. Bowles. And uh, through Mayor Crest to Councillor Parker, get a bit of a whiplash here looking at you. Um, this response comes from Sam Van Housen. Uh, uh, Sam Housing, your traffic and transportation planner. That's a really good question. Uh, so, engineering department has reviewed this intersection and has determined that warning signal signage uh, indicating a 90 degree turn um, of the through road is the most appropriate within the 30 kilometer per hour speed with, with 30 kilometer per hour speed tabs. So the lane access to the street is treated like all other accesses where drivers must yield to oncoming traffic. While all laneways in the city grid network are not typically signed, this intersection has the potential to cause confusion for drivers approaching in any direction given that the access is not 90 degrees to either direction of travel. For this reason, a yield sign will be posted for the lane and its access to the intersection of Frederick Street and College Avenue East. A sign order has been created and residents can expect to see it installed this week. Wow, was that fast. Thank you, that's ideal. Very good, and uh, thanks for bringing that up. I had sort of shared in, in the communication uh, on that one, uh, and uh, that is an excellent uh, solution to that. And Councillor uh, Cameron. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just have one inquiry this evening. I was contacted by a business recently uh, inquiring about the completion of a construction project at the corner of 25th Street and Victoria Avenue. Um, <clears throat> recently, the city replaced the waterworks underground there, but a large corner of 25th Street remains barricaded, although construction is complete there to the, to the business's knowledge. Um, just wondering an anticipated timeline for removal of the barricades and our completion of the asphalt work at the corner. Very good. Thank you. Back to Mr. Bowles for a response. From Mayor Crest to Councillor Cameron, uh, you're going to see Kyle Winter's uh, name, Acting Manager of Infrastructure, come up a few times tonight uh, throughout the questions. So the work on 25th Street and Victoria Avenue remains barricaded due to a back backordered materials for the uh, water main. The materials should be on site this week or next. Once we have those materials, we are looking at one day of work to complete the water main installation and a week to repair the street. Local businesses and residents will be informed of this schedule. Thank you. And Councillor Barry. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I have four, so I don't know if anybody else had any tonight besides. Yeah, I think we'll just. Charge through the ball through all four. Okay. More expedient. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And then through you, Your Worship, uh, my first inquiry is, it's a two-part A and B. Um, can I get an update on the ongoing construction at 26th Street and Willow Crescent uh, slash Brandon Avenue with some timelines as to when the roads will be open again for traffic? Just a side note on that, these inquiries were put in Friday. They did open the north-south bound lanes on 26th Street from Brandon Avenue, Willowdale North that day. So they are open, but they are periodically closed during construction like today one lane was closed as they do some work there just so people know 
Uh, so I'll take a response on that one first, and then I'll read B. Okay. We'll do it in uh, A and B then. So go ahead, Mr. Bull. Okay, so on A, uh, through uh, Mayor, Mayor Crest to Councillor Barry, so this provi uh, response is provided by, yes, Kyle Winters, Acting Manager of Infrastructure. So he goes on to say, construction at 26 and Brandon will continue for next week, for the next few weeks. The later we can work this year, the less there is to complete next. The northbound lanes of 26th Street were reopened to traffic, as you'd stated, on Saturday, and work continues uh, on the southbound lanes. There will still be intermittent, intermittent closures of the intersection to wrap up water main and concrete work, but only for short periods. The weather looks good for the next couple of weeks, so we should be able to wrap up the work on 26th Street and in the intersection to allow us to focus on Willowdale Crescent next spring. Local businesses and residents will be informed of this schedule. Thank you. Thank you for the response. And part B of that, through you, Your Worship, um, same request, but just the work that's being done at 26 in Maryland because that street's also closed off for through traffic there. Okay. Mm -hmm. the next one there, Mr. Bowles. Through uh, Matt Crest to uh, Councillor Barry and same person responding. Kyle goes on to say the water main and sewer installation on 26th Street and Maryland Avenue will wrap up this week. Road repairs at the intersection are scheduled for next week, as well as two repair patches on Maryland Avenue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my second one, uh, you're through your worship. Um, with all the development and construction taking place in the southwest area city and in the Bellafield development, significant damage has been done to Mar Marquis Drive uh, caused by the heavy construction equipment and trucks. What is the city's plan in the immediate future for doing a permanent repair to Marquis Drive as opposed to the Band-Aid fixes we've had to been doing? Is the city also considering at the same time to possibly mill and repave Marquis Crescent uh, because of the condition that that road is in as well? And come back to... Mr. Bulls and Mr. Winters. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, through Mayor Crest, uh, Councillor Barry. Yes, again, this is from uh, Kyle Winters. Um, Marcus Drive requires significant repairs, um, as we all know, or if you've been down there, which are planned for 2022. Marcus Crescent is also on our radar for rehabilitation work. How we schedule the work depends on the scope of the project, full construction versus mill and repave. The project time and the project timelines. We do not want to tie up both streets and displace residential access for a large portion of the suburb. If the scope of the work allows us to manage the work so that both can be completed at the same time without impacting residents, we could complete both in 2022. That is something that we will consider over the next couple of weeks while we work out the project details and design. This will be a budget discussion with council later this year, well, early next year. Great, thank you, and I look forward to that discussion of budget time. That's an important project for those people in that area. Uh, my third uh, inquiry, Your Worship, through you. Uh, could council get a presentation from Fire and EMS on operations and challenges that they might be facing now or in the near future? As we head into budget, it would be good information for council to have ahead of time, uh, ahead of budget, instead of just having the presentations on the weekend of budget deliberations, so we have some time to maybe discuss it. Very good, thank you, Mr. Bowles. Uh, through Mayor Crest to Councillor Barry, this response is provided by uh, Fire Chief Scott McDonald and myself, City Manager. Uh, Brandon Fire and Emergency Services and any other department would be available to, to make a presentation regarding operations and challenges of service delivery at Council's request. The presentation date and time can be coordinated prior to budget deliberations, but part of that process. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. And just to follow up on that then, um and I'll just maybe add, and as Council knows, you know, we have numerous of those kind of informal pre-budget meetings, and they kind of vary from year to year. We don't hear from, you know, some issue years we need to hear from this department and that, that department. So naturally, uh, for this uh, inquiry, you know, like we probably actually haven't had a fire one for a little while. So haven't for a while. So yeah. this would be uh, good to do fire and EMS this year. So as a follow-up, your worship through you on that, then I would like to actually... Uh, uh, make the request that we do have an informal meeting with with fire and ems and that we have it by no later than the middle of november okay well on an informal basis do our best to yeah fit it all because in. again we just need the time yeah okay go ahead uh, yeah fourth and last one uh through your worship uh, i would like to know if there's any available sharps disposal containers that can be placed in 
other areas of the city, I know we do have some placed in certain areas, but uh, none out in, in my area. I've had requests over the past year from residents in my ward wanting to see these placed along certain areas of walking paths where used needles are found on a regular basis by pedestrians and they're having to dispose of them. So um, request to see if we can get some, some sharps disposal containers in different areas. Okay. And again, back to Mr. Bowles. Through Mayor Crest, uh, Councillor Barry, this response is provided by uh, Albert Trotz, our Occupational uh, Safety and Health Coordinator. Some sharps containers are available and the City Health and Safety Department is interested in the details and locations in question. Uh, while installation of a few containers can be accommodated, further discussion regarding uh, sharps containers policy to address the following questions, and he has a few questions here, so um, that are more rhetorical questions at this point. Are the sharps uh, being found on city property or private property for the purposes of purchasing, installation of sharps containers, monitoring of sharps containers, and disposal of used sharps? How will uh, this be funded on an ongoing basis? And are the city of Brandon residents currently handling uh, the sharps? And if so, uh, are they made aware of the hazard associated with uh, the sharps and how to handle them safely and the container safely? Uh, the Health and Safety Department is coordinating meeting with uh, public health uh, harm reduction team for further insight to this issue and a further discussion with council may ensue. Thank you uh, for your worship just to respond to that. I uh, appreciate the response. I can I can get back to him on location because we've got one hot spot. That we get these, uh, I won't dwell into the other ones with the budget and that, but I'll certainly get back to Mr. Trotz about where we are finding the biggest problem with that. And so yeah, thank or you. even channel it to Mr. Bowles yeah. and they can then coordinate uh, the best approach to this. Good. Thank you for those responses. Good. And on to Councillor DeJarley. Thank you, through your worship, uh, to the city manager. Can we get an update on funding applications made for the construction of an active transportation bridge uh, on 8th Street? Thank you. And again, back to Mr. Bowles. Mayor Crest to uh, Councillor DeJarley. This response is provided by Sam Van Housen, uh, Traffic and Transportation Planner. The engineering department continues to research to search for available uh, and applicable grants for the 8th Street pedestrian bridge. However, we have been unsuccessful in finding something that would adequately fund the project at this time. The engineering department will continue to search for available grants and work them into the, a funding strategy for this project for council to consider. Thank you. And my second uh, inquiry is regarding um uh, it's the speed of trains. I received an inquiry from a citizen concerned about the speed at which some of the trains travel as they enter city limits, particularly the 34th Street tracks. What is the speed limit for trains and how is this monitored? Thank you. And again, uh, Mr. Bowles, please. Mayor Crest to Councillor Desjardins. Uh, this one has some uh, interesting educational facts, but it's a little bit longer than normal. Again, this comes from uh, Sam Van Housen. The speed limit on rail corridors is set by, by the railway as per Transport Canada Rail Safety Regulations. The CP line west of 18th Street is commonly known as Broadview Subdivision. Mile Zero is located at 10th Street in Brandon and the, and the subdivision mile increases to the west. So miles 0 through 2.5 are located within the city of Brandon and these zones have a set maximum speed of 60 miles per hour or 95 kilometers per hour for both directions of travel. While westbound trains leaving Brandon Yard uh, are accelerating and are not likely to reach maximum speed until they are out of the city of Brandon limits, eastbound trains would be at or near this maximum speed and beginning to slow down in, in anticipation of reaching the yard. The mainline track on 34th Street goes through a super elevated curve that requires a speed reduction to 55 kilometers per hour. Given the curve's location in proximity to the yard, and it is safe to say that trains would be traveling at less than 55 kilometers per hour. Speed limits are monitored by CP police and any concerns over train speeds can be reported directly to, to CP. The new 34th Street pedestrian and vehicle crossing, still currently under construction, has been designed to provide adequate sight lines for both pedestrian and vehicle traffic in accordance with Transport Canada design guidelines. Thank you. 
Thank you, so three words. Just for clarification, um, and maybe you can answer this. What I'm reading here is it's actually okay for a train to be uh, flying at 60 miles per hour within a city that has speed limits of 50 kilometers for cars. That yeah, I don't think the two correlate. To be honest with you, um, that speed train speeds are regulated by. Transport Canada, and you know, there's a whole different world. You know, we do try to dovetail into municipalities. You know, they, they try to be cooperative in municipalities, but we don't have uh, authority over them, I guess. Is that fair to say, Mr. Bowles? Absolutely. Sure, yeah, no, I didn't think we did. I just think it's quite a different. Uh... And, and I think, but my experience that dealing with sort of specific scenarios is, is a, you know, like if you've got, you know, uh, um, specific instances and whatnot that we could probably deal with that mm -hmm. instead of something that's a little more uh, broad and it even conjures up the length of the train is that, um, are we talking about the front end of the train or the tail end of the train at, at this, because they're in excess of a mile long sometimes, so it's a, uh, so again, uh, we'll continue to do that. There, there is even uh, conversations going on about the um, whistling uh, once the um, devices are uh, installed at 34th and, and uh, Pacific there that uh, uh, we'd be eligible to cease the whistling there, which we did successfully at 26th Street and Pacific and most of them in Brynham because we've got the full um, full set of uh, gate controls you know, that allows that to happen so improvements uh, on the way yeah well and no and thank you for the response and just to um, remind citizens that uh, they can uh, be reported to CP directly so CP police handle uh, any of those concerns and so that's who you should direct those concerns to yeah okay now that was a, uh, a very robust set of inquiries but that doesn't close the door on any that may have arose through the day i will say uh, i think the council is aware of this but uh, executive assistant in our office kathy roach kind of coordinates all of the things so it was a busy day for her to get this all uh, hammered together in time for council uh, meeting tonight uh, when a councillor puts in a inquiry they don't know that all of their colleagues are doing it at the same time so some nights we have one or two and some nights we have ten so anyways but if there are any other inquiries tonight we'd be glad to take them okay seeing none we can move on to the next item thank you for all those there were a lot of good thoughtful uh, questions there that's great next item please the order of announcement your worship announcements now councillor barry thank you worship uh, i wish to inform the the public again that uh, next tuesday october 12th at 6.30 p.m. in the Myers Norris Penny Hall at the Keystone Center, I will be holding a ward meeting. Uh, the ward meeting is open to, of course, residents of the Linden Lanes Ward and anybody else that might want to attend. Um, Manitoba health orders will be in, in force. So in other words, you have to be double, double vaccinated and proof of that vaccination has to be presented at the door to attend the meeting. Uh, we will have some members of administration there. Uh, some of the main topics that we're gonna be discussing are the Southwest Secondary Plan, the development that's going on in Little Lanes Ward. You're gonna hear more about that tonight uh, with a couple things in the agenda. Uh, the construction along Willowdale, because of course it's it's not just done this year and people have some questions about that and, and other ward issues as they come up in that. So it'll be a very informative meeting, if nothing else. I'm sure there'll be lots of discussion, lots of questions. And I certainly invite people to um, come out with the number of phone calls and emails I've had in the last two weeks. I'm anticipating about a thousand people coming out to this meeting. <laughs> that, but uh, it's nice for people to call, but I'd sure like them to show up to the ward meeting as well. So, and that, so thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Barry. Let's, let's repeat the date and time again, October 12th. Tuesday, October 12th, starting at 6.30 p.m. in the myers Norris Penny Hall at the Keystone Center. Thank you, and Councillor Fawcett. Yes, thank you, through your worship. Just a uh, note that October 4th is the day of action and awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited people. 
As we reflect on the very real continued impact of systemic racism in our communities, the work of reconciliation is an ongoing process in disrupting these systems saves lives. And today we remember those who have been taken too soon, honoring the healing journeys of the survivors and their families. Uh, I was able to attend a, a ceremony portion today at Stanley Park uh, with a large group of uh, representatives there. Uh, and then they were able to take uh, their walk down to Dinsdale Park. Um, just the small notes, you know, uh, despite this community being only 5% of the population of Canada, 50% of human trafficking victims in uh, the country are Indigenous women. And in Manitoba, which is not a very large population relative to the rest of the country, we do have the third highest number of uh, 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 missing, uh, murdered Indigenous women uh, cases in the country. So something to... Uh, Constantly think about any time that you can note things uh, and be helpful. Try to be. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Fawcett. Uh, sadly, uh, the, this year's event coincided with our council meeting that was starting. I'm glad you were able to get there and make an appearance on our behalf. I usually walk in that, and it was uh, not going to be um, uh, scheduling uh, allowing it tonight, tonight. So thanks for being able to get there. And other, Councillor DeJarley. Yeah, through your worship uh, to Council and the public, on September 22nd, IANI, which stands for the Interprovincial Association of Native Employment, held their Westman Champions of Indigenous Employee Awards, of employment, rather. And um, I was trying to rack my brain as to who um, received the rewards. And so Gail Cullen. Uh, from the Brandon Friendship Center was uh, acknowledged for her uh, hard work over the years. Um, tremendous uh, community resident and uh, th those of you who don't know Gail, she's been uh, the Executive Director for the Friendship Center for as long as I can remember. Um, uh, Blue Water Wash, uh, which is a, a company just on, on Park Avenue East, I think, was uh, acknowledged for their work in um, uh, hiring Indigenous employees. And uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award was uh, given to um, Barry French, and Barry uh, was presented with, a, with an eagle feather that day. Um, so uh, we thank Barry for his service um, over the years here in Brandon. Uh, those of you who don't know, he was a, a long time uh, a correctional officer here, and um, he's, his energy is sorely missed, but he's, he's still out there, uh, and so we still been able to call on him from time to time, but it was good to see him receive that award. And um, yeah, I want to thank IANI for the work they do and uh, acknowledge the, the work of those um, Indigenous employment champions. Excellent. Those are good awards. Any other announcements? Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this one's a bit of a PSA, but it's one thing that I do hear from residents from time to time. Uh, just that the Eastview landfill hours uh, move to the winter hours. Uh, Starting the beginning of October, the new hours are at the landfill are Monday to Sunday, 8 to 4.45, with statutory holidays open at 8 to 4.45 as well. And surprisingly, it's something that I get a call on more often than not is landfill hours, so I figured it'd be good to get it out there and share with residents. So. Very good. Yeah, one of the more popular venues that we have. <laughs> Other announcements? We'll uh, toss in on September 25th our own uh, recreation department, well actually for a span of a couple of weeks, um, held a variety of activities for uh, celebration of Manitoba 150. Uh, as you know, the, the official year was um, last year in, in 2020, uh, but COVID certainly impacted that, so many of the events got uh, uh, carried over to this year and uh, the events at the City of Brandon we're planning to uh, engage in did occur uh, in that time period, uh, kind of culminating on September 25th with uh, a kind of an outdoor gathering at the Keystone Centre. It was kind of an outdoor drive-in theatre plus um, uh, some live entertainment from uh, local artist Emma Peterson. Uh, had a great uh, kind of a land acknowledgement and uh, speaking by uh, uh, Indigenous leader Mata, I'll not get the prepare for the didn't uh, get Mata's uh, last name down, but uh, she's uh, um, an Inuk uh, 
individual and just a delightful speaker, and uh, so she added to the event. While that was going on, uh, an event on the Keystone property, a rib fest had uh, occurred, which was a drive-through operation. So uh, again, to make the best of the uh, pandemic, these rib fest people have figured out how to do this uh, kind of on the road, and everybody get picks up their box of ribs or whatever else you order from the comfort and the safety of your car, and uh, it was very popular as well. So again, good to see some innovation with bringing some events back, and certainly will help the likes of the Keystone Center, and, and certainly uh, um, gives our citizens some, you know, well-deserved uh, outings and uh, ways of being able to uh, recreate safely, uh, so it's, uh, it's all good. Before we carry on, any more announcements that anybody had? All right, we will move on to the next item, please. Under the order of general business, Your Worship, we have the appointments to the Downtown Safety and Wellness Task Force. Okay, now uh, my understanding, prior to doing that, we were going to uh, make a, uh, an amendment. We did have a right. council did consider this matter. Um, we certainly have a very important uh, new committee, uh, the Downtown Wellness and Safety Task Force that the Council has initiated, and we did put out a call publicly for uh, potential volunteers that may want to sit on this task force. Uh, happily, we had an overwhelming response, a great many excellent people, uh, and we won't be able to accommodate all of them on the, on the committee, but uh, Council did want to uh, expand the committee a little bit uh, to be able to take advantage of at least a couple more of these citizens without still making the committee too unwieldy. So I think we had a motion in mind to expand the terms of reference, so I think it would be appropriate to take that motion first. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Jarley. Thank you, through your worship. I move that Council um, <coughs> add two um, members from the citizens at large to the Downtown Task Force. Thank you. Seconder, please. Officer Lupke. Uh, mover wish to speak? Just very quickly, Your Worship, to echo your, your sentiment, uh, we were um, uh, floored, positively floored, at the response from the community, and there were just, honestly, so many, so many names, so many qualified candidates that we felt it, uh, we were behooved to, to add uh, a couple extra spots uh, to allow for more voices to be heard. Well put. And I would kind of say in advance that, and even that, that, that we won't be able to accommodate all of the excellent people that came on. So the fact that you know, we won't be able to appoint everybody that applied um, doesn't mean that they were not solid candidates as well. It's just that uh, Council felt we, we, we couldn't make the committee uh, too large and, and kind of unwieldy, but uh, uh, would, th these two would take the, the total number on this committee to 12, which is still a, uh, a decent size. So uh, that was the sentiment behind that. Any other discussion? We'll call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? <coughs> that is carried. And uh, the next element of that um, is that on our paper? I refresh here. Okay. And uh, very good. Ah, uh, <laughs> that could have uh, helped us with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's up there. Would somebody like to make a motion on the uh, next portion, Councillor Jarley? Thank you, through your worship. I move that the following persons be appointed to the Downtown Wellness and Safety Task Force for a one year term to expire October 3rd, 2022, unless extended by a motion of City Council. Councillor Jeff Fawcett. Councillor Bruce Lupke, Drew Kinsman, Christopher Hees, Joy Escalera, Tim Silversides, Sandy Smith, James Chambers, Matthew Scott Grills, Janine Pelche, and Cam Worch. Thank you. Seconder, please. Councillor Cameron. Again, mover wish to speak. Uh, we uh, are really looking forward to this task force getting started. Uh, I will note that uh, we had such a tremendous outpouring from the community wanting to get involved 
There will be other opportunities to do so, I would imagine, uh, through subcommittee work. Obviously, the, the downtown council will be involved in that respect, as will other councillors as we move forward. But we're really um, thrilled with the group of individuals that we have. Thank you very much. Other discussion? Questions? I might just add to Councillor Desjardins' comments that without uh, Council did discuss and, and set up the terms of reference um, for this uh, just a few weeks ago and, and without sort of repeating all of that discussion but uh, as contained in it um, where, where the notion that there'd be the task force which would be um, you know a little more modest in size but then it would call upon the sort of the expertise and input uh, from a great many Organi you know, kind of associated organizations and individuals, and groups of individuals, um, as they go through the work. So that was kind of the uh, solution to, you know, like we could probably have a couple of dozen uh, local organizations that would make sense to be associated with this, but we'd end up with such an unwieldy size committee that it would be uh, difficult to be uh, that proficient. So it was concluded we had the task force, then they could draw upon these um, kind of supporting organizations uh, as, as they uh, need and probably works for everyone. That way these associate organizations don't have to be at the table all the time, but they can be at the table when kind of their area of, of uh, expertise uh, is being discussed. So I, thought it was, you know, I think Council thought it was an excellent solution to tapping the, the, uh, the interest and dedication of our community um, well, at the same time, keeping the you know, committee uh, uh, proficient. So, uh, so those organizations out there that, that know that they have things to contribute, uh, then they'll know that they'll they'll have a, a mechanism to do so uh, in that fashion. So, any other discussion before we call the question? And seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And next item, please. Consideration of the application to subdivide 2210 Maryland Avenue. Councillor Barry. Thank you, Worship. I move that the application to subdivide 2210 Maryland Avenue uh, from one law to public road and public reserve in the educational, institutional, parks and recreation and development and reserve zones be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, the site being partially rezoned to the educational institutional and parks and recreation zones and to the plan of subdivision including the following dedications that a, a public road dedication taking the northernmost four meter of the site to be incorporated into the maryland avenue right away and b a public reserve dedication taking the westernmost 15 i'm going to say meters of the site and at number three the owner or successor providing written confirmation of the City of Brandon Planning and Buildings Department, the taxes for the property to be subdivided for the current year plus any penalty, interest in arrears have been paid in full or arrangements must be made satisfactory to Brandon City Council. Thank you. Can I get a seconder, please? Councillor Cullum. Now, the mover wish to speak. And I think there's a lot more qualified people here to speak on this than me, Your Worship, and if I could ask somebody for the administration to short, come up. But, uh, so. Not sure of then if, uh, okay, it looks like Mr. Nicholas is coming forward, although I think Ms. Chapel is also the presenter according to the report, but thank you, Mr. Nichols. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through the council, it was outlined by uh, Councillor Barry, um, the subdivision recommendation. I'll present both of the items together. The one is an amendment to the zoning bond, and one is a subdivision, but they're running concurrently because they're both needed to move this uh, proposal forward. Uh, so the first point of clarity is uh, the request is from the Francophone School Division. I know there's been discussion about, uh, well, we just had a school, which is great for the community. Now we have another one, and part of the reason why is it's a separate school division entirely. Um, as many of the community members are aware, there's a separate site owned by the Brandon School Division to the north of Mary Lynn, that's operated as a very successful community garden for many years, and that will remain as such. I, I know that was one of the options that was explored, um, but it did not move forward, and that's why this alternate site to the south was uh, explored. Uh, typically, we don't bring forward a subdivision until a rezoning is finished, uh, but there's some funding tied up in here, and we'd like to work with them as much as we can to move this process along. Uh, so 
legislatively we can still bring it forward subject to the condition of the rezoning being completed so I think we can work with them especially considering we didn't receive any objective objections as part of uh, as part of the process the proposed school is going to be uh, uh, key to 12 and uh, be rezoned educational institutional uh, a few of the items that were identified in the development agreement on the rezoning that's all the lengthy condition that folks usually don't like reading too much but a few of them deal with public reserve taken to the west so that public reserve will serve as a green space corridor which will provide hopefully access to the school division as well as to Brentwood mobile home park to the south so connect those areas together nicely and then we're also requesting that the road be widened uh, by an additional four meters that will allow for a sidewalk to be installed by the school on the south side and uh, there will be a crossing installed to try to uh, get uh, children to school safety trying to lear learn from some of maybe the challenges we've had with uh, Maryland Park School not to say we can't uh, get ahead of those but this is the kind of the chance to try to figure some of this stuff out, a out ahead of time there will be a traffic study done by the school division prior to coming forward and just to, that'll look at the the length of the approaches and any required queuing to get into the site to hopefully make sure it runs uh, nice and smooth uh, for the residents uh, just maybe a little bit of an anecdotal comment uh, this was one of the smoothest applications that I've seen dealt with 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 the group so really great feedback to the francophone school division and their consultant for working through this process there's always lots of complicated steps and they seem to work through it all in a very quick manner and addressed all the concerns and uh, I'm pleased to bring forward and answer any questions thanks thank you very much mr. nickel um, excellent report and uh, we will open the floor to questions at uh, maybe councillor Shaboy uh, thank you worship through to the presenter um, one question I have just in foresight of looking you know that you're doing a lot of um, planning in regards to the school being there uh, that is a collector route along Maryland like it's a busy street are you also looking seriously at um, maybe slowing down the traffic flow along that strip and and having either lights or a stop or something where the school is because I know when we had the Maryland school and you know they, there's a bit of traffic congestion and stuff happens when you have school sites around and if you're going to be really looking closely at some of those patterns on that stri stretch there yeah through your worship to Councillor Shaboy I think traffic calming is going to be part of it especially when we're talking about the sidewalk construction and, and a really delineated crossing um, so hopefully that will help manage uh, the traffic if not I know we'll explore kind of other options to to learn from our past experiences yeah. okay thanks. thanks very good and uh, sorry Councillor Cameron thank you worship through you to Mr. Nickel um, definitely you know quite supportive of, of having more educational access to, to people in the community one of the questions I have is you had mentioned about access to Brentwood uh, trailer court in behind there um, does the development in any way impact or have Brentwood having to remove trailers you know um, change their sort of configuration at all or is this just a bonus that they'll also have another access port in and out yeah through uh, your worship to council cameras so just to clarify when I was talking about connection I was talking about uh, active transportation so people walking and cycling okay. um, when we had planned for that when we did Brentwood to try to make provide a way for the the residents there to tie into eventual connections on the pathways on Maryland and other uses so the roads won't go through okay. and uh, certainly no trailers or mobile homes will be removed as part of this this will just be on that currently vacant site to the north of uh, Brentwood appreciate it thank you hey, any other questions I think you got it covered off thank you very much mr. nickel thank you back to the mover did you have anything to add mr. nothing Consider? your worship no. any other discussion apart from the uh, um, sort of the nuts and bolts of the development and subdivision and uh, and the, the rezoning uh, I did want to, you know, just sort of highlight perhaps the, the significance of the uh, uh, Franco Manitoban having chosen Brandon. Um, you'll, you'll note that the, the closest, uh, I believe, there's about 24 schools in the province operated by this uh, uh, school division. The closest one uh, is currently in Shiloh, and and uh, so. Sort of, uh, given that we're Manitoba's second largest city, uh, significant that uh, 
the school division has has chosen and been very proactive to find a, a suitable location or making this investment in in the community here and and uh, you know we know that uh, uh, French language studies is very popular here both in the French version uh, stream and then this would be a fully uh, uh, Franco Manitoban uh, school so again apart from the nuts and bolts that uh, happy to hear Mr. Nichols say was worked out very smoothly and proactively by the by that school division uh, great uh, and we would certainly be welcoming them to Brandon and uh, know that this would be a, a welcomed addition by many citizens I, I know this school will be probably immediately full when it's open so uh, we ready for the question there I believe call the question all those in favor opposed that is carried thank you next item please under the order of bylaws, Your Worship, bylaw number 7311, which is to rezone 2210 Maryland Avenue. Councilor Barry. Thank you, Worship. Uh, forgive me, I forgot to mention in the earlier move that uh, these are on behalf of Councilor Ron Brown, who's currently on leave. He still is a member of this council for now, and I'm kind of doing this on his behalf as our wards Appreciate join, and this is fairly close to my ward as well. So. Yep, thank you. Uh, I move that the bylaw number 7311 to rezone a part of the property located at 2210 Maryland Avenue be amended as follows. Number one, deleting in section one the words uh, and C and G commercial general and substituting them therefore the following words PR parks and recreation and DR developmental reserve. And number two, in section two, substituting map two to reflect the amendment to section one. And that the bylaws as amended be read a second time. And a seconder, please. Councilor Lukey. Um, whoever wish to speak. Uh, no, Your Worship, I'm sure if the administration would like to come up and discuss this a little further, in case there's questions, that's fine, but there's quite a bit more to get to this as well. So, Yeah, and uh, well, again, as Mr. Nickel uh, pointed out, that it was the same project, obviously, and I think he tried to cover it off. Was, was there anything specific to the um, amendment, uh, Mr. Nickel, that you wanted to highlight for us? Yeah, three, Your Worship. I probably should have covered it in my last spiel, but I, I forgot. Um, the amendment uh, is simply a change to the bylaw to remove the commercial component. Uh, that was a component that was added originally um, because there was some desire to see commercial development on the residual parcel. However, our infrastructure planning is just not at the point where we can support additional development there, especially with the uncertainty. Um, about what's going on the property right now. So we advised them to leave that component out at this point in time, which they were okay with. Uh, hopefully we'll have to get, come back to that at some point in time once we have a better sense of uh, particularly the wastewater network in that area and that it can take the additional flows from that parcel. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, before you go, any questions of Mr. Nickel on, on that piece? And you will see the next part we'll be asking, actually asking uh, Council to hold third reading in abeyance anyways until the lengthy list of uh, conditions are, are, are met, which is very common. So uh, we probably won't need to catch you until we come back to third reading. So uh, thank you. And uh, back to this uh, amendment for uh, uh, second reading. Actually, I think we're doing the amendment and then uh, moving another motion to uh, pass second reading as amended. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And then we'll need another a motion to uh, approve that as amended. Go ahead, Councilor Perry. Your Worship, I move that the bylaw uh, as amended be read a second time. Thank you. And seconded by Councilor Lukey. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And then the, the motion to uh, hold it in abeyance. Go ahead, Councilor Barry. Your Worship, third reading of this bylaw be held in abeyance pending the owner successor entering into development agreement with the city with the following conditions uh, listed as listed, sorry, rate right from A to K, and that administration be authorized to prepare a development agreement containing all conditions and requirements to protect the city's interest in accordance with any procedures, policies, bylaws, and acts. Thank you. Seconder, please. Again, Councillor Shaboy this time. And any discussion? Just holding in abeyance, a very routine approach we take. Call for the question then. All those in favor? 
Opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. Next item, please. File number 7310, which is an amendment to Brandon Secondary, Southwest Brandon Secondary Plan Bylaw 7080. And back in the Councilor Barry's neighborhood. Thank you, Your Worship. Actually, this one actually falls right into my area for a change here. But yeah, the bylaw number 7310 to amend the Southwest Secondary Plan Bylaw 7080 be amended by making the following changes to Schedule A there to adding, number one, adding the following immediately after policy 6.4.3. Uh, 6.4.4 developers to the north of the existing Maryland Avenue right of way between Marquis Drive and 34th Street shall dedicate lands to establish a 20 meter wide right of way and a 9 meter public reserve buffer in accordance with the act. The right of way may develop may be developed as a utility corridor and provides the opportunity to extend Maryland Avenue to 34th Street if warranted by future traffic volumes. And that the bylaw as amended be read a second time. And seconder, please. Councilor Cullen. And would we wish to speak, or again, would we uh, like administration to come up? Uh, I'll speak briefly, and then if administration would like to come up. Um, this is, as much as this is housekeeping, this is a very, very important amendment being made to the secondary plan for my area. Uh, a lot of the meeting that's going to happen next week in my ward meeting is around Maryland Avenue extension because of the traffic, uh, increase in traffic we're having on Durham and Marquis. Uh, it's causing a lot of concern in the area. And as much as this says is warranted by future traffic, traffic volumes, I think the city's going to find that it's warranted right away here. So uh, I'll leave it at that and then ask if administration would like to present on that anymore. Very good. Uh, we plan on making some comments or answering questions. Mr. Nickel. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Council. Uh, so administration brought this secondary plot amendment forward uh, when the school division approached us uh, to do the school. So there, there was an amendment needed to the vision for the area. And uh, part of that, it gave us the opportunity to clean up some infrastructure policies, mostly related to wastewater capacity and providing clarity and thresholds for development in the area. Um, but as we went through the process, it became apparent that, uh, I mean, publicly, Folks weren't as interested as wastewater capacity issues as they were transportation. And uh, that kind of got caught up in the amendment uh, process, uh, saying there's some recent history around Maryland Avenue. Um, and when it was first brought forward, if council recalls, was uh, uh, during the second stage of the Bellafield neighborhood. And there was a recommendation at, at the time for administration to include contributions from a developer to pay for the extension of Maryland Avenue. At the time, there was objections received, not just from the developer uh, regarding the contributions, but also from area residents uh, who did not want to see the extension go through. Uh, at the time, the direction from council was to defer it to another secondary plan amendment, not this one, a previous one. We amend secondary plans almost all the time. And part of that, there was a traffic study completed looking at traffic volumes. Uh, through that process, uh, the recommendation was made through an external consultant that from a volume perspective, it wasn't required to extend Maryland to service full build out of the secondary plan area. So when it was brought forward to city council, it was brought forward without the recommendation to extend Maryland Avenue through to 34th. Since then, um, city council um, through an administration and the rezoning process has approved further subdivisions along Maryland Avenue um, with the expectation from the residents that it's not going through. So there's a larger community discussion here when we're talking about um, the vision. Uh, saying that, it's hard taking feedback at this stage just because the area is incomplete. The build-out hasn't, uh, hasn't been done, but there's certain access points that aren't in. We understand the trouble with 26 where we were trying to get it aligned before into Bellafield and have been unable to do so. Uh, currently, Patricia Avenue um, does not meet a city standard road, so often residents may not want to drive down it. Uh, certainly, there has been some increase in traffic on Durham, um, but there needs to be an analysis of the big picture, and that's hard to do right now because the big picture is incomplete. Um, saying that, I think we've learned from past discussions on transportation planning that flexibility is not a bad thing when we're looking at planning the city's transportation network. 
Um, so administratively, we have been acquiring the right-of-way as development occurs, um, and we did so recently for the subdivision to the north of Maryland, where we um, acquired that 20-meter right-of-way plus a buffer strip for um, public reserve and a trail. And uh, this policy just clarifies the city's intent to continue to do so as development occurs. So it, it clarifies something that we've already been doing and intend to do. Uh, what's important for residents to know is that the city doesn't have a full right-of-way to 34th. So even if there was a, a mandate to do it, um, we can't build it because we don't have the right-of-way right now. Um, typically, land is dedicated for development as land is subdivided. Uh, no charge to the city. That's just a typical development process, and there's no right-of-way right now. Um, so what this policy does clarify is when there is subdivision and rezoning of the lands, the city will acquire the right-of-way. At the very least, it's useful as utility corridor and greenway and provides potentially future city councils the option um, to pursue a connection if warranted uh, at that point in time, which is why um, we agree with some of the input we're receiving and are proposing um, the amendment to the secondary plan. Uh, the rest of the secondary plan is, like I said, mainly focused on infrastructure, some cleanup definitions around housekeeping and green space, and including the designation that will allow for the Francophone School to be rezoned and subdivided. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nickel. Again, uh, open the floor to any questions that may be of Mr. Nickel on this particular one. Councillor Fawcett. Yes, thank you, through your worship. I, uh, through Mr. Nickel, I seem to be a constant thorn in the side of Mr. Nickel and Mr. Pulak for the last, uh, well, really 11 years, but uh, particularly the last year or two. <laughs> But uh, th now this is something that, that the council initially had sort of voted out. Uh, I'm glad that the same council at least is going to take whatever heat may come on on this uh, versus it being five years out, ten years out to different councillors that don't have to, you know, don't have familiar with the history. Um, so, so we want to make sure that, that information gets shared, and I know that Councillor Barry will be doing that with residents in there, that, you know, that this is the potential of a road one day. Uh, because anything that comes in after the fact is always a play. You know, and we could see the writing on the wall with this one a long time ago. Uh, but that being said, uh, a bit of pressure on yourself and Mr. Pulak and such, that, that intersection has to be addressed as quickly as possible. And I know that we've seen some plans, the, 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 the Mary London 26th Street, being dug up right now for some work, we, we do have to address that intersection uh, sooner than later. So hopefully, I'm just using it to piggyback into this discussion, but hopefully that's uh, fairly imminent in our uh, plans. I don't know if it's in next year's budget. I know we've only looked at plans. you have anything further on that while we're kind of on that street? Or, or, or your cohort over there? For your worship, to Councillor Fawcett, so the, the discussion about the 26th and Maryland intersection is once again tricky because the city doesn't own the right of way. So when we're talking about discussions about dealing with issues in an imminent matter, typically when areas develop, we have the land uh, dedicated to the city through the development process. So not to say a city can't go outside of that process and try to acquire lands, it's just something we'd have to consider the different implications of doing that where we're pursuing something and compensating landowners for something typically we would get at no charge through the development process, as well as the, the overall disclaimer that not all landowners are looking to sell at some point in time. And I know that's something we had followed up with. So I think from a development perspective, we certainly agree that we'd like to deal with it and for sure we would have liked it to be dealt with already, uh, but in terms of timelines and the ability of the city to drive that, there are some limitations we want council to be aware of. Yeah, through your worship, and, and, and we, we are aware of it, and, uh, and, and I guess we're kind of asking the uh, administration to continue driving uh, that situation to get it uh, resolved the best we can, as, as quickly as we can. Okay, hey, other uh, questions of Mr. Nickel on, uh, on the Southwest uh, Secondary Plan Amendment? 
Mr. Nichol. Yes, Your Worship. Just one additional piece that I wanted to clarify that by proposing to amend the plan it, to include the right of way, we haven't Im included the connection in the plan. And the, and the connection doesn't exist because it wasn't warranted in the past traffic study and it's not currently budgeted in our capital budget for growth. And part of the reason was we've approved development and we haven't taken any contributions to it. And we have significant other contributions for growth that are facing the city. So we have to be strategic when we're thinking about improvement. So what this does is it, it says hopefully at some point in time the right of way will exist. But that improvement still doesn't exist in the plan and we're not saving for it within our development charges rates currently and it's not in the capital plan to be constructed. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, that's understood. Uh, then I'll follow up with that. Go ahead, Councilor yes, Foster. Thank you. So through your worship, so would that mean that we would need to implement something like we have for the Clare Avenue Reserve? No. Uh, through your worship to Councilor Fawcett, if, it, if this connection was something Council wanted to see, um, you would simply amend the secondary plan to include it, have it included in the capital budget, and uh, have it charged as part of the DC rates and with a portion followed, funded by the community at large. But I would uh, strongly encourage Council because that was the original staff recommendation that we had brought forward and that Council had at the time directed Ms. Administration to pursue the traffic study, which we had completed, which stated it, it wasn't warranted from a volume perspective. So if this was something, of course, we can always go back and explore things again, but I think we'd want to put a little bit more analysis into this just to make sure we're waiting, making the right decision for the entire community and the big picture. At last, so through your worship, so if we can get input from uh, Councillor Barry's ward meeting that he's having, uh, next week, uh, which will probably be on the agenda. He'll share it with the rest of us and we'll sort of see what uh, the neighborhood anyway is talking about there. So appreciate it and thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barry, go ahead. Thanks. Just, just to kind of add on to the comments from Councillor Fawcett and, and from Mr. Nickel, I do appreciate all the information being provided. It, it's accurate information. Um, that's you know th this is the fact that council you know four years ago whatever did approve the fact of not having that road run through there um, things have changed councillors believe it or not do make mistakes I think this is one we made when we did that at that time um, but I want to make sure that people understand that it can be corrected it's not going to be a simple thing but we can amend the secondary plan we can add it into the capital budget and we can add funds into the budget to do these things so it's not like it it's a dead issue that cannot happen there's just some things that have to take place and and part of it starts with the uh, again amending the secondary plan at some point and then basically getting into the capital plan the budget etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's not a not a sorry we're not doing this issue council needs to come back and revisit this as a whole and go from there so and I will at some point be proposing that before our uh, term is up next October so just to kind of forewarning everybody now so um, from my point of view I mean the, the 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 bigger plan I mean was sort of worked out with the developer their consultants our uh, development services group and so on and so forth and you know council has to kind of cobble through all of that and you know there's no question we we uh, make the final decisions based on the recommendations uh, that are uh, provided to us. What I, what I like about this is the fact that it will, sometimes <coughs> we've closed the door on possibilities and, and you know, no future council can, you know, without buying up a tract of houses right. and displacing people and so on, you know, really, you know, uh, so at least now we are, you know, th this amendment will you know, kind of st set the stage, like almost kind of put in a placeholder of of uh, space and direction that in the event traffic warrants it, um, you know, through, you know, maybe subsequent uh, traffic study that does show a warrant for um, this connection and the land is largely available, at least, the, the you know, the potential for it. So at least we're keeping the options open for our council, future councils, you know, the neighborhood and, and the like. So I think we're being responsible by 
doing that, uh, keeping keeping those options open, keeping that door open. So I, that's what I like about this. Okay, not seeing any other questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nickel. Uh, back to the amending motion. Um, any further discussion on that? Uh, seeing none, we'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And uh, I guess the motion as amended can be put. Councillor Berry? I thank you, Worship. I move that the bylaw as amended be read a second time. Seconder, please. Councillor Cameron? Move your to speak? No, Your Worship. Okay. Any other discussion? Call for question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And I believe third reading is in order. Go ahead. Your Worship, I move that the bylaw be read a third and final time. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Shiboye. Again, any other discussion? Seeing none, third reading requires a recorded vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Bylaw number 7315, which is to amend the Brandon Urban Aboriginal People's Council bylaw. And who'd like to make that motion? Councilor Fossa. Thank you, through your worship. That bylaw number 7315 to amend Brandon Urban Aboriginal People's Council bylaw number 6988 with respect to membership be read a first time. Seconder, please. Councilor Frangi. And again, first reading we don't normally debate. It's the process started. I'm going to call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Next item, please. Bylaw number 7317, which is the closure of the lane located north of Maple and south of Parker Boulevard. And is that Councillor DeJarley or Councillor Fawcett? DeJarley. Go ahead. Or DeJarley, or I don't know who he is. Thank you, through your worship. I move that bylaw number 7317 to close the north south lane located north of Maple Avenue and south of Parker Boulevard and convey same to the city of Brandon be read a second time. Seconder, please. Councillor Fawcett. Kind of on the border. Movers to speak? Um, good. I'm just pulling it up here, sorry. This is the one about affordable housing, right? Uh, right, so this is uh, just to provide a development framework for the Dykes floodplain uh, north of Stickney and south of the Cinnaboyne River. The pr proposed site is located within a transition area identified for low-density residential development. Closing and consolidating the lane allows the city to create an approximately 5,000 square foot meter site for a future affordable housing development. So that's what's going on here. Very good. I think if there are any questions, we could ask administration to come forward, but kind of a house cleaning. <coughs> Pardon me. Excited. Um, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And third reading is in order. Councillor DeJarley? Your Worship, I move that the bylaw be read a third and final time. Seconder, please. Councillor Shaboye. Any discussion? We're going to call the question. And third reading, a required vote is. Uh, uh, Recorded vote is required. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried unanimously. Thank you. Next item, please. Bylaw number 7318, which is an amendment to the parking enforcement bylaw. Like parking bylaws. Councillor Lupke, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I move that bylaw number 7318 to amend parking enforcement bylaw number 7167 to replace Schedule A, parking violations, be read a second time. Seconder, please. Councillor Parker. Uh, mover wish to speak? Or? Um, I can speak briefly on it, Your Worship. I believe this is just uh, cleaning up some wording in the schedule on parking bylaws, particularly where it comes to crosswalks. And I believe we are just removing the word A in front of crosswalks in the schedule on on on, on. There was some confusion that the file I read that you're parked on a crosswalk where this is really related to parking close to a crosswalk so by law enforcement's had some challenges 
the way it's written, and so they're cleaning it up so that we are less challenged. Any further discussion? Ready for the question then? All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Third reading's in order. Councillor Lupke? Sure. I move that the bylaw be read a third and final time. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Shaboye. And if there's not further discussion, we will call the question. Again, recorded vote required. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Giving of notice, Your Worship. Any giving of notice this evening? Just for the public's uh, information, you'll hear us say that on most agendas. It's a required part of our agenda, and it, it uh, gives councillors an opportunity to uh, give us notice in advance of a motion that they will be advancing at a future council meeting. And um, it gets utilized. Uh, now and again, but uh, not always, and so that's why you'll see us go through that, uh, and there'll be uh, nothing contained in it. So that's just a little uh, fun fact for tonight. Uh, we move on to the next item, please. A motion to adjourn would be in order, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Barry, seconded by Councillor Shaboye. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. Excellent meeting.